thank you for your warm reception. I have been in love with food all my life. Growing up, our family was a little odd, especially in the suburbs in the 50s and 60s. My grandfather had a half-acre garden, gorgeous figs and peaches. And not only that, but he custom his kitchen to hold seven refrigerators and freezers. And at least one of those freezers was filled with lake trout that he caught and cleaned himself. Now, then I went to school in Boston. And one of the first things I did was I joined what was then one of the largest food co-ops in the country. And sometimes I would go out with the produce buyer to these monstrously large warehouses, distribution centers for the entire metropolitan of Boston. And I got a small insight of what it takes to actually feed a city. Now, that was 40 years ago. And even then, now I can remember falling in love with the business of food. But what's happened in the 40 years since is that food has become a, a trade for governments and a profit creating center for corporations. For instance, right. the United States exports almost $140 billion of food every year. Now, not only that, food has actually become graded like a commodity. And the highest quality food is known as export quality. All right? Which means that those famous, internationally famous apples that are grown in Washington State you hear about, you may not ever have the pleasure of treating yourself with. Now another example is garbanzo beans. I love garbanzo beans. Garbanzo greens are actually grown organically, not far from here. But if I order a bag of garbanzo beans, from my natural foods distributor, chances are they're going to be grown in either India or China. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> so while the business of food has been feeding the world, people have begun to wake up to what's going on. It doesn't make a lot of sense. They've been asking really, really good questions. And part of that is due to technology, the internet, and independent media, which has been helping get the word out there about what's going on. People are asking really great questions. Where does my food come from? How is it grown? What is the relationship between the foods I eat and my family's health? And what's so beautiful about these questions is that they enable us to start reflecting okay. on good. meaning. Good. And good. part of that is, so that's good. All right. what about the environment? Okay. What's the relationship between food right. and the environment? What's the relationship right. between food and sustainability? And what's the relationship between food and self-responsibility? Okay. Now, I love big problems. And I have always loved tackling big problems, and I wanted to find a solution to this one. So I began to look at what, is, what does a food sustainable community look like? And what I realized was is that there were three basic principles to a food sustainable community. One, how many of you have a pantry in your homes? How many of you have a pantry? In your pantry, you've got groceries and cans of soup and things that you purchased from the grocery store. How many of you have a pantry with foods that were accessed regionally, direct from the farm? Most people don't. And the reason is most people don't know what grows regionally. So the first important component to building sustainable food is to learn how to build a pantry 
how to rotate a pantry with seasonal foods that grow within your region. The second important one is a community is strong and sustainable when the members of that community grow some portion of their own food. Even if it's indoor greens and salad greens, or a small patio garden, or joining together for a community garden, some portion. And the third principle of a sustainable community is coming together as a community to buy together the foods that your community does not produce itself. Now, what's beautiful about these three principles is that it's a model that can be used anywhere. It's a model that is reproducible any, with any group, whether it's urban, suburban. There's a community in Yelm, semi-urban, semi-suburban, uh, that is taking these elements to heart. And magic happened because when they started focusing and working as a community, all sorts of diverse factions came together. Churches giving them land, and community groups coming together to be sustainable. At the end of the day, if we trust governments and corporations to feed us, we might get into trouble. If we take the proactive steps of developing food sustainability within our own communities as individuals, as families, and as a community as a whole, we help create an environment that allows us to be free from uncertainty about where our food comes from. Thank you very much.